Hey YouTube, uh, I wanted to do a quick video on how to set up Splunk. So what I've got here is I went over on the DigitalOcean and I set up two virtual machines, Splunk 1 and Splunk 2. Splunk 1 is going to be the server and Splunk 2 is going to be the uh, forwarder. So here are the, uh, here are the commands. Uh, to install this, I got this um, because, you know, just by getting onto Splunk.com and downloading the eval. And this only takes a couple of seconds. The next command is to just go ahead and run the install. And on this command, I um, so that only takes, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds to get done. And I'll speed up some of this, uh, some of this video so you don't have to sit and watch the boring parts. Uh, you can just ignore this thing here. Okay, next command is to change the Splunk directory. Oops, Splunk Forwarder, Splunk Server, Splunk Server, copy that. <clears throat> okay, then we're going to do uh, accept license. Put in a new password. And this only takes a second or two to get done. You don't have to worry about the local host thing here. Um, it's going to be uh, the IP address. Now, the next thing we want to do is enable Splunk to start at boot. And then the next part of this uh, is just to show you what the first thing you have to do um, is to turn Splunk on so it listens on that port for incoming connections. So that's the next part of this. Let me go ahead and get a new window going here. And <clears throat> all right, that's our that's our IP address. And on port 8000, so this is the first thing you're going to see. And then go ahead and put in the uh, admin password that you, you did on the command line. And say OK to that. And now here we are. <clears throat> so before you go any further, go over here to forwarding and receiving under settings and then configure receiving create a new port and by default it's 9997 you can put whatever you want um, if you want it on some different port but for this purpose I'm just gonna give it the default Save that. And now we're going to go ahead and run this command again. And see, in fact, it is listening on that port. OK. So let's go back over here to searching and reporting. And I'm going to skip that. So data summary, there's nothing. I mean, basically, there's nothing going into it right now. Now I could uh, set up, you know, monitoring its own files, but that's not the purpose of this. I want to show you how to get the uh, a forwarder to send send data in. 
Okay, now we're over here to the Splunk 2, which I'm going to set up as the forwarder. And let me go ahead and go down here and go ahead and install the Universal Forwarder. And there's the next command. Go ahead and install it. Forward is pretty quick. Uh, pretty quick. Okay. So the next command is accept the license. Oh no, I'm sorry. Let's CD over to the bin directory. And then start accept license. Okay, new password. All right, and there we go. Okay, so at this point, um, let's add the forward server, which is is going to be this address here because that's Splunk 01. So let me go ahead and change that and then issue this command. So it's Splunk add forward server, the address of your Splunk server, and then the port. Okay, username admin. All right, that's a client admin password. I made a mistake there. Okay. Now, the next thing to do is if I issue this command right here, it'll start sending um it'll start sending uh you know logs into the uh into the Splunk server, but it wouldn't be permanent. To get it to be permanent, we have to edit this file and then add them. But we're gonna do a, I'll do a demonstration here. Um, also you're gonna want to um, if you want it to start at boot time, you issue this command. And then let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to put this over here. And I'll issue that command right there. So what I'm saying is, is on the, on the forwarding machine, the client, if you will, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a monitor. I'm going to monitor this file and I'm going to tell it the source type is Linux secure. Okay, added. And then you can see where it just pulled 76 events. And Splunk02 is what it is, uh, the host. So there it is, source type Linux secure. Now the next thing I'll show you is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another monitor. And now you're going to see if I go. Um, Back here, data summary. And now it says there's one host, which is this Splunk02, but there's two source types, Linux Secure and Syslog. Okay. And then if I go in here, you can see that, like, there's source type Syslog. Now you can just keep doing this for every kind of um, file that you have. If you want to do uh, web server, 
you just use um, I think it's like Apache combined you can look you can look all that up all the different kind of source types but again this is not permanent it's not permanent until you go in and you um, you edit this file right here so let's go ahead and do that and this file is on the forwarder okay you can see there's not much in it here and I'm in VI so just hit O to open up a new line and I'm going to add these lines right here and that's it escape right quit and then the only thing I need to do um, is I can hit here and just restart Splunk or I could reboot it but it would be sending it in so I'm gonna stop this here and I'm gonna add uh, a lamp stack and I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, how easy it is to add to uh, add all your your uh, your web server files okay back here I just uh, instead of doing the whole lamp stack I just did you know the Apache web server so it, here's the default page for that um, now to get uh, the command for Apache um, logs going into Splunk is this one source type is access combined so I'll go ahead and issue that command Uh, let's see var log access var log add monitor path does not exist why is that How about apache 2 that's what it is uh, let's see here there we go okay okay so back over here and let's go ahead back to the uh, search and data summary source types is now three so it's at so there it is right there there's one um, event let me see if I can generate a couple more events here now there's three now which is good enough so uh, go ahead and click on that and you can see that there they are this for now um, tells me you know where it came from and uh, but that's it I mean that that's how simple it is to get um, all your logs into into Splunk you just from every forwarder whether it's Linux or it's Windows or Cisco or whatever um, there's a source type defined or an add-on you can add and you just need to go into those boxes and and again um, install the forwarder and then set up your source types um, you know your file I'm sorry your files to monitor and uh, and that's that's pretty pretty much it and I'll try to put these commands um, you know for anybody who wants them in uh, the YouTube down below sometimes they don't allow you to do that but so um, what I'll do though is for the purposes of this video I'm gonna go ahead and put these commands up so that you can see them all um, again this command you can just get the latest and greatest on the Splunk site and Go ahead and pause the video if you need to copy down any of the stuff. Uh, this will all change based on, you know, what you download. So be wary of that. And then, so here's all the Splunk stuff uh, server. And then here's the forwarder. Go ahead and pause the video so you can see this. And here are the commands here for editing the inputs file making it permanent and don't forget your boot start command um, here's a couple of useful commands right here for seeing what's going on on the uh, 
on the server as well as any forwarder you get out there. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Hope this helps somebody.